today we are going to revise the topic 5 uh, or chapter 5 and in this chapter we will discuss about the ocean and fisheries so in this chapter at the end of the chapter we also summarize that how many topics are included in the syllabus and we will see that we had covered all the chapters are not all the topics are not okay so start from the beginning ocean and fisheries if you see the ocean ocean means the water body and uh, this water is which water salty water and fisheries you know that come from the word fish and in this we are talking about fishing and factors which are going to impact the fisheries so first of all they're saying oceans are very important part of the life on the earth so they are give us a lot of things and they are the source of many things for example if you talk about food so the fish that includes the true fish fin fish shell fish and other sea animals can be eaten so it means that this uh, or these oceans they are providing us the food and that food is used by the humans to continue their life activities the main fisheries are located in continental shelf this word what is the continental shelf so this is the part in the sea and it is like 150 meters deep approximately we will see the detail also so most of them you will find the fisheries are there most of the types of the fish are located there and what is the reason why they are located there because that there they can find the plenty of the light i mean the water is shallow uh, till 150 they can get the sunlight and there is more oxygen and there is more oxygen mean there is more nutrients so fisheries are present there after that not only the food we are getting from the oceans you are getting chemical and building material also so sometimes you'll find that uh, the building materials uh, which are used in the uh, building construction areas they are found in the rocks and sometimes these rocks are carried from the oceans and sometimes even they are getting the sand from the rivers or oceans that so we're talking about oceans here so also chemical building material many materials in ocean in the oceans have been eroded from the land where rain and wind break down the rocks and carried into the oceans via rivers so they're saying that how these chemical and building materials are rich in the ocean they're saying that first of all weathering happened and weathering happened due to the wind or due to the weather condition and after that erosion happened and when the erosion happened so all these chemicals and building material from the rocks they went to the rivers and the from the river they went to the ocean so in other words we can say that in the ocean you can find chemicals and the building materials now the most common thing which are present in the ocean they uh, you can say directly you can extract them the salt magnesium tin gold titanium and diamond they are also found in the ocean for example now talk about salt salt water is left more many weeks in a hot sun for example if you take a sea water and you will just put the sea water in an open place so what will happen due to sunlight all the water it will evaporate when the water will evaporate behind you will find the salt so you can say the salt is a uh, can be obtained from the oceans after that you have the diamonds diamonds found in a greater number in ocean floor than on the land they are saying that if you compare the percentage of the diamond they are more found in the ocean floor as compared to the land but when they are under the ocean so it becomes really difficult to take them out much harder to mine ocean floor as it must be dragged for example first of all you have to clear the ocean above you have the water then you have the sand and other things you have to erode them then you have to clear all the water after that you have to remove all the uh, mud weeds rubbish whatever there then sediment are silted then you have to go down so it is a 
quite difficult process as you will mine the diamond on the land. So this is the other thing present in the ocean. Okay. After that, sand and gravel and crushed rocks. Gravel is also like you are when you are make uh, breaking down the stone into small pieces, and sometimes it is used on the road. So they are throwing the small piece of a stone on the road, and then they put the coal tar or bitumen to make the road. So that is a gravel. Gravel means a fine pieces of rock. Then you have a sand crushed rock also. Mine for the construction industry. Physical damage can be caused to seabed and associated habitat if care is not taken. They're saying you can get the sand, gravel, and crushed rock from the sea, but it is quite dangerous because what when you are going, for example, this is the sea, and this is the water above here. Here is the you have the sand and other thing. So you have to remove all these layers. Here can be the plants, here can be other things. Then you have to remove these things. It means you are removing the habitat for many living things. So they're saying that it will disturb that uh, habitat for the many organisms. So the care should be taken if there is no other way to, to get the sand and gravel. Only the ocean is the only choice. Then the care should be taken while you are doing this process. The fine particle clouds that are produced resettled and interface with the photosensitive they're saying that even even you are taking care and due to that sometime the sand particle they are moving in the water because you dig the ground to get the sand but still some sand particles they are really lighter they are moving in the water so they can disturb they can interference and they can disturb the photosensitive process they also act as a source of heavy metal that can enter the food chain. And you know that whenever we're talking about the food chain, the down one, the main thing is the producers. If you see any food chain or food rabbit, so down you'll find the producer. And mainly producers are what? Plants. And plants, how they produce their the food by the help of photo synthesis so it means that it means that when you're talking about photosynthesis the plants are really important and when you're doing all these activities to taking the sand and gravel crushed rock from there so it is a possibility that there will be a uh, you can say small the stone and the small sand the sand or other pieces they can come and they can disturb the photosynthesis and also they can enter any food chain because they have become really fine. Okay, so this is the other thing we said that we can get from the uh, ocean, sand, gravel, and crushed rock. After that, you have the oil. Oil means you're talking about crude oil. Lot, if you look and find lot of well, which of crude oil in the ocean, even in Saudi Arabia, in the Mam area. So you can get from the crude oil from the ocean. Wave energy, we discuss in the chapter number two that the energy which is produced by the waves which is produced in the ocean. So they are also getting the wave energy from ocean. Tide energy, the high tides at the night when the tides become high. So you store the water in a dam. And in the day when the tide become low, you remove the water from the dam again back to the sea. So and then you put a turbine here. This turbine moves the uh, this water moves the turbine and electricity is produced. So that's known as tidal energy. So you can get the tidal energy also from the ocean. After that, the tourism. So in a lot of countries, they are earning a lot of money from the tourism from the oceans. The best example is Maldives, Sri Lanka, okay, and other countries which have the small islands and those island all around, they have the ocean and they are getting millions of tourists every year. So this, uh, in this way, the ocean also provide our tourism and from the tourism, the, especially the most economically developed countries, they come and they live here and they spend their time and it generate a lot of revenue or income for that country which has these oceans. 
so tourism also you are getting from the ocean after that you have the transport yes in transport the ships are important to transport the people and goods when when you have this one type of uh, yeah, you can say ocean because for example from one country this is one continent this is the other continent and sometimes they don't have any land link between them they all water so these oceans are used as a mean or the mode of transportation and they are using the ship and other type of the you can say ferries and the carriers to move the things from one place to another so also the oceans provide you the transportation now we will talk about different type of the ship which are used in the ocean for transporting for different thing in the exam they will not discuss about that how it looks like what is the design of this one no but you should know the type and the use for what for example one is the bulk carrier this is the type of a ship and which is used for what transport food such as rice and wheat so you should know about their types and their particular use this is the picture and this is another picture you can see here they are here they are unloading whatever the material was inside they are unloading it after that you have container ship these container ship if you can see these ship they have the containers and these containers you found on the trucks on the road especially you going to jeddah the mom or the area near the seaport you will find lot of trucks are carrying these containers so these ships they bring these containers the thousand of the container they are piled up over each other so they are used to move this inside the container they have the lot of type of the goods it can be the car inside you have the luggage lot of things even the people who are sending the cargo shipments from saudi arabia to sudan pakistan and other countries so they are using the cargo ships the entire load is carried in a lorry size container known as containerization this one so by putting the load in a container is known as containerization so this is the container ship this you can another examples the pictures here you can see them after that another the type of the ship is a tanker in the tanker from the name you can say that transport fluids fluid mean liquid and gases as a chemistry student a physics student you know whenever the word come fluid it mean gas or liquids both comes in fluids so whenever you want to transport a liquid substance or a gas substance liquid for example petroleum or liquefied natural gas or sometime the vegetable oil or the wine you are transporting from one place to another so they are using the tankers the difference here all there is a tanks down here all the thing which you transporting it is stored here so this is another type of a transportation used in the sea that is tankers this is another example now this tanker is near the seaport and from here they fit a pipe and from the pipe they will take out whatever the liquid gas anything they will take it out on the land so this is known as contain a uh, tanker ship after that you have refrigerated ship refrigerated ship means that from the name you can say refrigeration means refrigerate means the things which needs a cold temperature are the things which needs very low temperature to keep so they are transferred by this one so here transport of uh, perishable items such as vegetable fruits fish and dairy products dairy products mean you have yogurt you have the milk and you have the butter all these so they are moved with the help of these ship so they are known as refrigerated ships or refer ship got it so both words can be used so no need to confuse if in the exam they will ask about refer ship so it means they are talking about refrigerated ships so they are used for the thing which needs the cold temperature otherwise they will be spoiled you can see here because maybe you saw this a brand the food brand and they are they have their own ship to move the things 
after that you have roll on roll off ships roll on roll off from the name transport of vehicles together with their load so here what you will do the whole truck for example you can see there is a truck truck also have the load on them so with the load they come inside this ship not the empty empty also there with the load also there so they can come and they are moving them from one place to another this type of the ship are used for example now here you have a land let's say this is island and this is a and here you have you want to this is land you want to come here here is only maybe 1 km or 2 km or 10 km c after that again land and the plane this uh, uh, you can say uh, the trucks they have to travel maybe 2000 km on land only this area they have to pass so what they will do they will come to this ship with their load and when they will reach here again they will come out of the ship and then start start to travel on the land so mostly they are used for a small distance not a big distance because already the trucks they have loaded you can see here and how you see the cars are going inside and see how they are coming out here so they are specially used between the small distance in the sea after that we have coastal trading vessels they are also the ship but they they are compared you can say the small uh, smaller in size as compared to other so used for trade between places and that are close together especially in island groups for example as i told you that in maldives they have the island here here very close maybe 5 km 10 km so they are used in between to so move from one island to other so they also take the people from one place to another they take the goods also and they also the food supply other thing they move from one place so they are known as coastal trading vessels you can see also they are smaller in size after that you have the ferries ferries you know that they are used especially for tourism purpose also and also move from one place to another used mainly for movement of foot passenger sometime with their cars mainly between island or between main island and other small island you can say so if it is also a type of a transport of a ship in which the things are moved from a uh, small distance in the water from one to another so this is the ferries you can see also this one cruise ship cruise ship also mainly they are for recreation or for the tourism purpose some countries they are offering like singapore and the other countries you go there you book your stay for 7 days 5 days trip and you stay there this cruise ship almost uh, a city within itself you can find everything like a markets you can find the uh, hotels you can find casinos you can find the you can supermarkets everything inside in other word people live in this one uh, in uh, inside the sea and enjoy their time so that is the cruise ship mainly used for and then this is another the type of a cruise ship you can see here these are for the children this are for the adults it is amusement things are there so this is just like to spend the vacation and the leisure time after that you have the ocean liner the ocean liner used to transport people from one part to another okay it move from one part to another in the this one cruise the people just spend their time mostly spend their time as a vacation but here they use from one place to another again i'm saying in the exam they are not going that that detail that what is the difference between cruise ship or a uh, ocean liner they will not going to ask in detail but you should know all the mode of transportation here if you talk about cruise ship and ocean liner you can say cruise ship is quite bigger okay and multi purpose as compared to the ocean liner so that is the main difference if you want even want to compare them 
ओके पोटेंशियल फॉर सेफ ड्रिंकिंग वाटर ओके टिल हियर एनी वन हैज एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज यू कैन आस्क इज इट क्लियर टू एवरी वन प्लीज थैंक यू ओके आफ्टर दैट देर सेंग not only the transportation these ocean they can all have a lot of potential for providing the safe drinking water for the human being and these are also implemented in saudi arabia gulf countries where the the countries they are using the desalination process or they are using the uh, distillation process to get the dr drinking water from the sea so it mean that the ocean can also provide you the drinking water now we talk about the fisheries word fisheries we talk about the fisheries and uh, the, how the the behavior of the ocean will help the fisheries to grow to reproduce and how it will help the climate change all these things this is really easy really easy no need to confuse no need to be afraid by seeing the term ocean currents or all these thing really easy and in the exam they are not going to ask that much detail we will discuss that one inshallah but just try to get the concept the main thing you have to get the concept only that is the main thing okay okay now first of all see the word ocean currents what is the ocean current very simple the continuous predictable directional movement of sea water driven by gravity wind and water density so that is known as ocean current i mean that it is a flow of water in a ocean that water is flowing this direction or what is flowing this direction that is known as ocean current and this ocean current depends on what the gravity also the wind direction and the density of the water so due to that if the water moving in a ocean so that is known as ocean current is it clear what is ocean current i am waiting for your answer is it clear yes yes okay after that they are saying that there are two type of the motion the ocean water can move in two direction upward or downward and sideways mean horizontally mean like this or like this and vertically up or down so these are the two possible direction in which the water the ocean water can move so the ocean water moves in two direction horizontally and vertically horizontal movement are referred to as currents while the vertical change are called upwelling or downwelling understand if you talk about the motion in which the water is moving right or left so that is known as current and if the water is moving upward that is known as upwelling if the water is moving downward so known as downwelling or both are known as together upwelling or downwelling is it clear yes okay now see here this is really easy diagram but i will explain to you now see we talk about major ocean currents once again if i talk about major ocean currents it mean that here we are talking about the major movements of water in the ocean number one type is surface current movement of water of the surface sorry movement of the surface water of a sea in a constant direction you can see maybe the water is moving in this constant direction 
it's not like this whole surface moving like up and down no and here maybe you will find like this so this comes constant direction in which the water is moving at the surface of the ocean that is known as surface current once again when the water moving on the surface of the ocean in a constant direction it can be towards right or it can be towards left but it be a constant and this type of current or motion or movement is known as surface current is it clear okay after that the how the bottom happens for example you know this is the sea water ice part here you have the ice and here water also move in this direction because water is also moving in this direction and again coming from here when water come at the top from down it also coming like this because if the water is moving in this direction it doesn't mean that water come again and start to oppose this one no from here water comes then from here after some time it start to come down so here again they are mixing each other and coming again so this is how the surface current is produced after that you have the prevailing wind this is another term is used again is really easy prevailing wind if you use the word prevail prevail means something remain for a time not sudden but remains for some specific time they are saying the direction from which the wind nearly always blow in a particular area that is known as prevailing wind for example now you are in jeddah let's say i'm giving the example or you are in dubai or you are in port sudan and this is the ocean got it you find that in this area always the wind is moving by in this direction most of the time you will find the wind will move this direction so what is the prevailing wind in here in this direction so that is known as prevailing wind got it any confusion can we move forward i uh, know it's clear yes okay. after that you have the wind direction now when you're talking about the wind direction the prevailing wind is the wind that blows more often I mean for example maybe in a in a uh, year you have 365 days for example maybe 290 or 300 or 330 days mostly you will find this type of the wind maybe sometime opposite but mostly you will find the same wind that is known as prevailing wind and they have given the example here in united state the west uh, uh, westlers consistently uh, move the weather from west to east across the continent so here in the exam they will not ask any example but if you want to keep it uh, remember sub to you you want to eat after that this is coriolis effect coriolis effect this is really easy again i'm telling you don't be confused from the name okay what happens now you know that our earth is round like a ball shape when the wind is for example if there is a nothing wind is blowing like this wind will go straight and it will continue straight but whenever wind come to a round shape so it cannot go straight it will also bend around the earth because your earth is spinning around its axis earth is moving due to this movement when the air reaches near to the earth it also turn in a circle or it bends this bending of wind and why it is bending because your earth is moving around this axis so this is known as coriolis effect is it clear or not yes okay once again since the earth rotates 
winds do not blow directly from north to south for example if the uh, the wind want to come from here till here it cannot come directly when it will reach here it has to bend it has to bend around the then it will reach somewhere here so wind curves they curve because the earth rotates or spin on its axis the coriolis effect is the curving of winds due to the earth rotation if in the exam question come what is the coriolis effect if you write even this part you will get mark inshallah clear yes after that the equator equator also maybe in lower grades you also studied what is equator equator is an imaginary line means we draw this imaginary line is not present on the earth but we made it for just for some classification distribution so according to this line we are saying that this line is dividing the planet into two equal parts one here one here so this is known as equator an equator is an imaginary line around the middle of the planet you can see this red line again i'm telling on the earth you will not find this line we draw it on the map we just assume it and with the help of this one we are dividing this planet in the earth into two parts so that's known as this line is known as equator is it clear yes yes please answer because if you're not answering i don't know you are understanding or not after that here they took a uh, the round shape of the earth and then they draw this line equator the same thing but a different diagram after that you have hemisphere hemisphere they again it's like a division because why they're making the division so when they're making the earth and they're divided into different parts so it will help them to describe the different features of the earth they can divide the different climate of the earth for example they are saying that if you this is the earth and you will divide it like this like we are doing in equator so this upper part is known as northern hemisphere because if you see this one here so you can see north south east west so the upper part is known as the northern hemisphere now you are dividing into two parts got it here and down one is known as here southern hemisphere you can see here this one got it and if you divide them in this way okay and this part then this half it is known as western hemisphere you can see because toward the west this is known as eastern upper one this one is known as northern and this is southern hemisphere is there any confusion uh, no. okay now again the equator or line 0 degree latitude divides the earth into northern hemisphere and same thing i talking about if you draw the equator so you'll find upper part you can say northern hemisphere and down part you can say southern hemisphere and if you will divide it in this way so you can say here eastern or one you can say southern okay see now here now the current in the southern hemisphere are generally anti clockwise as the wind blow from south east and force the western australian bengalia and peruvian uh, current northwards so here they are saying what happened when you are talking about the earth rotation the earth is rotating like this you can see here direction of earth rotation you can see when the wind how the wind actually blows it comes like this got it it should come down straight but i told you due to the earth movement it bend like this 
as you can see here it should come straight down but it bends like this it should go straight but it will bend like this due to the you can say movement so they are saying that if you talk about the current in southern hemisphere they are anti clockwise okay if you can remember only this part that is fine no need for these examples they are not required but this one you can say the current in southern hemisphere are generally anti clockwise and how they are anti clockwise okay here you can see this one if i divide it i will divide into two hemisphere which hemisphere this one who will tell me which hemisphere this one tell me uh, northern hemisphere northern hemisphere and down one which one uh, southern. southern hemisphere so what they saying in southern hemisphere the currents are generally what anti clockwise so this motion is what if something moving like this clockwise or anti clockwise uh, anti clockwise and in northern what is this clockwise clockwise got the what are they are saying in the above three lines got the idea uh, yes please participate don't be sit quiet it will improve inshallah your comprehension the cold currents again the cold currents mean the movement which comes from cold poles the north pole and the south pole where you have the glaciers warm currents comes from the tropic or either side of the equator for example see here now they are talking about the blue one they are cold okay you can see this is your north pole this is your south pole got it now you can see cold they are coming from top or from bottom the cold currents they are coming from the bottom or from the top because here you have the cold places here you have the cold places these red ones they are coming from the sides or from the center because these areas the areas are the hot places again here warm currents flow away from the equator once again another thing for example if i will draw the equator here so i will draw the equator this is the equator line i will change the color then it will be more easy so this is the equator line they are saying that the warm current always move away from the equator you can see the red lines they are going away from the equator whenever there is a warm current so it moves away from the equator cold one always towards the equator you can see here this one you can see this one you can see cold currents flow towards the equator from the poles is it clear once again you can see here you can see this is the equator line if i want to draw okay red line going away from equator this is going away from equator going from equi away equator going away from equator blue cold current towards equator towards equator towards equator towards equator towards equator understand or not ah uh, yes okay. if in the exam yes. in the exam i will give you this diagram let's suppose and this is the equator now tell me this is which current warm or cold this one a uh, cold why because it's moving towards the equator towards the equator understand now if in the exam yes. they will not mention the colors so from the direction can you tell this is a which type of a current easy yes okay after that the finding the fish 
where as we uh, studied in the first uh, you can say page we said that the fish are found most of the fish are found in continental shelf and what is a continental shelf it is the shallow water where the water is not more than 150 meter deep and you can find there bismillah rahman rahim okay let's start now we'll talk about the continental fish now we we'll talk about the fisheries and we say we will study in this part of the chapter that uh, what what do you mean by fisheries and where you can found them and what is overfishing what are the different techniques used to catch the fish and other thing so as we discuss as uh, i told you before in the beginning of the chapter that main fisheries main fisheries mean the main type of the fish where they are found they are found in continental shelf this area is known as continental shelf why it is known continental shelf because if you see this one this is shallow not much deep as compared to these here and here the light can easily pass through up to this level and when the, the light pass through so it means that there is a plenty of nutrients also present here and plenty of oxygen also here so this is the best place for fish to live to reproduce and to make its habitat so that is known as continental shelf after that they are saying what happens in continental shelf what is the main reason why the fish are found there they are saying herbivore fish rely on primary producers mainly green algae called phytoplankton and these phytoplankton they are just like uh, the in other words they are used as a producers and the fish which are eating the plant so they are depending on phytoplankton the carnivore fish eat the herbivores these ones if you see this one you have herbivores what they eat they eat what phyto plankton and then you have what carnivore fish what they eat they eat them got it so this is so it means this is the main thing if you don't have this one you don't have this one and they will also cannot eat this one so main if you see the important structure or important part of this marine life is phytoplankton they are like a plants inside the sea and they are the main primary producers they are part of the food web starting with the phytoplankton thus the fish are found where the plenty full phytoplankton it means that these are the main part and fish will be present where you have more phytoplankton so this is the main reason why they are found in continental shelf because in continental shelf you have phytoplankton in a plentiful quantity phytoplankton phytoplankton produce their own food by photosynthesis which requires light water and carbon dioxide water is abundant in ocean and carbon dioxide dissolved in water from the atmosphere therefore light is likely to be limiting factor for the photosynthesis it means that as we discuss you know in biology what for photosynthesis what you need the mainly you need water you need carbon dioxide and you need light okay and here water they already present the boys are already inside the ocean carbon dioxide they are saying from the atmosphere carbon dioxide is dissolved in water both are now only the light is left because light has to go through the water to the phytoplankton then they will start photosynthesis but only light if there is a light the photosynthesis will be you can say more if there is no light it will be less the only factor which can limit which can stop which can increase or decrease the speed of photosynthesis in phytoplankton that is the light now most ocean water has absorbed all the sunlight the depth of 200 meter so they are saying more than 
if you go 200 meter, you will not find the sunlight. That means above that you have the sunlight. The deep zone, which is more than 200 meter, is called ephotic zone. Ephotic zone, below which the photosensitivity will not take place. It, if the photosensitivity will not take place, so it's very difficult for the fish to live there permanently. Maybe for some time they can dive down, but they cannot stay there. So most suitable place for the fish is the continental shelf. Now, not all the areas with the continental shelf have the significant fisheries. It doesn't mean that, for example, if you have a continental shelf, this one all, this has the same, here is the same, here is the same. No, they have different. And it depends on what? It depends on the some factors which we have discussed now, like carbon dioxide, light, and water. See here, phytoplankton need not just light carbon dioxide and water, which allow it to make the carbohydrates such as sugar, but they also require mineral nutrients to make proteins. They are saying photosensitive, okay, they are doing this one, but for the nutrients, they also need the nutrients, minerals. Making protein require the source of nitrogen and sulfur. If phytoplankton want to make the protein, so they need nitrogen and sulfur. Nucleic, nucleic acid, which form the genes of living thing also require phosphorus. Inside the cell, you have the nucleic acid, which is responsible for formation of gene. They need phosphorus. The green pigment, chlorophyll, which is essential for photosensitivity, require magnesium. So here they want to say that not only the carbon dioxide, light and water required, if you talk about that phytoplankton are the food for other organisms, so they need the minerals, they need the sulfur, they need phosphorus, they need magnesium, a lot of things. So the most important fisheries of the world are where the current system ship up decaying material from the seabed which rich in nutrients. They're saying it means that, okay, now we discuss all these things. So then where are they found? Now this is the continental shelf. Okay, now try to understand. This is water all. From here, you are getting light. Here, you are getting carbon dioxide. Got it? Here, water is already there. So here, the photosensitivity can happen strongly. But at the same time, in the bottom seabed, you have nutrients here. Nutrients which came from outside and they settled on the bed. As I told you, water also moved from down to up like this. So these nutrients, they will move up. And they will go upper part of continental shelf. This upper part already have carbon dioxide, light, and water but now you also have the nutrients. When these nutrients will come up, now you have ideal atmosphere for phytoplankton to do the photosensis, also produce proteins or a lot of things. Did you get my point? Hello? No answer? Uh, yes. If you didn't get it, tell me. I, I will repeat this one. Again, I'm saying that if anybody asks to you where you can find the more phytoplankton population, you will find the area where the nutrients from the seabed, they in a process to go up. From outside, they come down. And from the seabed, they go up in this continental shelf. So in that area, you will find more possibility of fish population. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now upwelling. Remember we discussed that the water is moving in two directions. Here horizontally or vertically. Vertically means up and down. So vertically moving up and down that's known as upwelling. So areas where minerals at the ocean floor for example here the minerals are here due to this upwelling the water will take them up 
so what are the upwelling these are the areas where the minerals at the ocean floor are brought up to the surface by currents an example of peruvian anchoy of the west coast south america so in the exam if they can ask the give a example of upwelling and they ask a place so you can give this one west coast of south america and which one peruvian anchoy this is cha sound chapter not ka cha and koi in there a different pronunciation in british there is americans unquai uh, anchoy and this uh, uh, i'm british you will find anchovy so both are right this is a different position so if in the exam the question comes what is upwelling so you will say areas where minerals at the sea floor are brought up to the surface by current this process is known as upwelling if you say give an example so you can give this example peruvian enjoy or and where it is happening west coast of south america is it clear yes okay now here you can see this one another thing is known as el nino southern oscillation e n s o el nino southern oscillation what is this they are saying that upwelling what is upwelling nutrients from the bottom of the sea going up from outside they come in the ocean from the ocean they goes up to the upper water so this is known as upwelling is distributed every 50 10 to 15 years they are saying it happens of after every 10 to 15 years every time it happen that the nutrients from the bottom they go up they move up so this process is known as el nino southern oscillation is it clear nobody is replying tell me yes who is this fatima um. lean meral you are not understanding let me know Uh, no it's clear it's clear thank you once again i'm saying that there is a process is a natural process inside the sea that the mineral which come into the sea they settle in the bottom and from bottom every 10 to 15 years they come up with the help of water in the upper part of the water so this movement in which the mineral come up in a periodically like 10 to 15 years this is known as il nino southern oscillation and why it happened it happened due to different factors temperature air pressure atmosphere this one due to this it happens in the exam question comes so you can write this definition so you can get it answer okay once again they are saying that in lino southern oscillation the change in prevailing winds that leads to change in pattern of current in the ocean so again they are talking about the poor the warm uh, nutrient poor water come on to the region of from the equator again they are talking about the same thing that when the move they move from down to up the nutrients it is good for the uh, fish and it's good for the phytoplankton because they are they can grow well and after that these phytoplankton eat by the fish the small fish eaten by the big fish so this i want to tell the importance of el nino southern oscillation process now impacts of exploitation of the oceans what do you mean by exploit exploit mean that you use something more than you need got it for example you need one glass of water 
okay to drink what you will do you drink half and throw it then take again small amount again the whole water you throw it or you waste the water that's known as exploitation so they're saying that if the you catch the fish but if you exploit if you exploit it then that is known as overfishing overfishing what is overfishing for example you know that the fish they have a natural process they lay egg they give birth in different types then they again lay egg the people catch the fish and they eat it again fish lay egg this is a continuous process people are taking it need mean the people are using it and fish reproducing it let's say the people every day they take 100 kg from a river and every day 100 kg is added from the fish mean 100 kg people take out and 100 kg new fish produced by the other fish mean the new generation comes so that is okay they are balanced whatever people are taking out at the same time the same amount are more than that is coming into the ocean but if it is opposite means every time people are taking 200 kg every day but the replacement only 100 kg so that is known as overfishing demand for a fish as food due to increase world population much bigger boats which work for a long way finding the fish easily by using the different devices so this is causing the overfishing before the people don't have the big fish the sort of big uh, ships to take to the mountains sorry sorry take to the ocean and then they are catching only the fish which is near by the coastal areas they don't have the machine to find where is the more fish they don't have more modernized the nets so that so now due to these new technology all the fish they are now in human reach and due to that overfishing happens again what is overfishing you are taking out fish more than they produce in the sea that is known as overfishing and what are the causes for that the demand population increasing bigger boats people got they can go more deeper in the sea and they have the different techniques like sonar you can see here where the more fish and with the help of that we can catch them is it clear here you can see this is the picture here you have the large fish here you have the small fish with the help of this one they put their nets so this is the sonar technique after that creation as uh, creation of huge nets the scope up everything in an area often half of it is discarded by catch what is by catch very simple for example let's say lean lean went to the ocean and lean want to catch only which fish let's say the uh, hamur okay this is a type of the fish she know that in this area she have the hamur what they will she will do she will bring her net and she will put on that area but when she took out the net from that area she found hamur she found the shaur fish she found that talpa fish other types also but lean doesn't want other lean only lean hamur so what the lean will do lean will take hamur and other types she will throw again back to the ocean so that is known as by catch so that is good whatever she needs taking and other she is putting back so that is a good thing but if you will not do by catch then what you don't need the other fish you will let them die outside even you don't need them did you got the point 
Yes, Lynn. Lynn, you went dancing to catch the fish directly, not talking. Okay. Impact of overfishing on marine fish species. They're saying if you are doing overfishing, as we said that overfishing means taking out more than produce. So what will happen? Lack of growth in fish caught globally. So the total, uh, the global population will decrease. Job will become less. Food supply become less. Fish, the size of the fish get progressively smaller. Because when you don't, you cannot wait because every fish need a certain time to grow well. And after that, it's become uh, healthy or uh, you can say proper fish. But for that, you have to wait. But if the people need for the food and they will search for the fish everywhere, there's no place to hide. So then they will take even the younger fish and you will find that small size fish, it will be in the market. After that, harvest untreated, protected, endangered marine species. Maybe if you will go like this, there are some species, they are less in quantity. They can also, maybe you will not find them. They will be endangered, mean the less in numbers. Reduction in marine biodiversity. You know that the food chain, the fish, they have an important role in the food chain of the sea marine life. If the fish will disturb, it will disturb the whole biodiversity of the marine life. So these are the impact of overfishing. Nets. Now we talk about the different type of the nets which are used for fishing. First of all is the trawl net. Trawl net when include, include the, including the bottom trawl net, you can see here, this is the trawl net. So here you will take two ropes and this is the like a weight here, weight here, and you put it. This comes down and it will sit at the bottom and then you will push it and it will go like this. Okay. And then it will carry whatever things come in it, it will take to this shape. I'll see you the next one. See here how it's taking in now. So here you will take everything here and you will even what you don't need on the seabed, you will take that. That's not good. It will also lose the habitat, disturb the bed. After that, you have the drift net. Drift net means this net is at the top. Here you can see. And it moves from one place to another. It comes like this. And you just, it will take from the top whatever available. You will put it down and then you lift it up straight. You will not drag it. So then you will take it here. So that is known as drift net you can see here it is like this all the fish catch then when they come they will stuck here and then they will catch it like this they will this will take it like this so this is known as drift net after that you have seen net seen net including the purse seen you can see here here what they will do this is a boat they here they start from here they take the net and they move like this and they make a circle around the fish and they again, then they pull it and all these fish becomes in the circle, they come here. So this is another type. After that, you have the dredge net. Dredge net, you can see here. These nets, they are on the floor and they have a long rod and they have the wheels. These wheels, they are moving on the seabed and they are you can say pulling these nets so this is also not good because it will disturb the uh, so the seabed dragged along the seabed mainly to catch the shellfish and the other type fishing living in the mud thus they dig into the seabed with the teeth or water jets so here it means they are digging the mud because why they need the shellfish or the, the other type of the fish which are living in the mud, it is used for them. That's fine because they, if they want to take particular. After that, the farming marine species that is known as mariculture reduced exploitation of the fisheries. 
they're saying that not only in the sea you will get the fish the people are doing the farming for the fish they make their pools they make the places they put the water they bring the fish from outside and they grow the fish there that's known as farming okay so they're saying that if you will do the fish farming that is good it will reduce the load of fisheries on the ocean so the people will not rely only the ocean other they also can get from these farm houses they can get the and mainly in pakistan if i talk about my country more more than 50% is coming from the the farms and it's easily approachable because if you don't have a river in your area if you don't have a sea in your area so from here you get the fish either you have to bring from a long distance so it's a better way you'll make a pool you put the water you make a habitat for fish and grow your own fish there reproduce your fish so that is farming so that is best okay after that here difference between aquaculture and mariculture aquaculture means farming fish in which water fresh water fresh water means river ground water inside the dam and mariculture means it is near the closed closed oceans the area for example this is the ocean near the ocean you have small areas where the water is trapped and water is here so they grow the fish here that's known as mariculture so this is the main difference you should be aware of okay after that how you will do this one for that you have to make some kind of strategies if you want to control the overfishing if you want to control the exploitation of fisheries so you have to make some strategies and according to that strategies you have to make some kind of plan for example you can say that every country it has a border of 200 nautical miles okay they can catch the fish in that area more than that they cannot there is a good thing i'll give the example let's say this is the ocean okay here you have let's say sudan here you have ksa here you have uae now every country can come up to this area sudan can come up to 200 nautical mile to catch the fish ksa come up to till here uae can come come to here this is free area no one can come in this area it means this is a area good for the fish to reproduce they can grow well here and like by this way they are safe if every country can come to this area again they will catch all the fish so again it's known as overfishing so this is they can say that 200 nautical miles nautical mile is a unit like we have kilometer meter in the land in the water they have a nautical miles so every country has only 200 kilometer nautical miles so the nautical mile where they can fish other they cannot go and this sea which is beyond that one that's known as international ocean where nobody can claim that one this is the thing after that they are saying net size net type and mesh size net type we to i we discussed that the drift one the crawl one mesh size what is the mesh size mean for example this is a net the size of this box okay this is size this this is known as mesh if this size is smaller it will catch even the small fish even their babies so what you will do those babies you cannot eat them but when you take them out they will die outside so they are saying that this mesh size should be bigger so the small fish cannot be caught only big fish can caught so that is the other thing 
you should do. And they are different shape like diamond shape and other things. Other method of fishing, okay? They're saying that you should, not only the net, the other many people, they are putting that one thread and sitting there. Many fisher, they have the devices for the tuna fishes. They include and suspend a type of the net which will catch all, not the special type. So they're saying that you have to maintain, you have to introduce the method which will not cause the overfishing. So that is the method you should use for the fishing. Solution, as we said, that use pole and nine method or catching the tuna and also by catch whatever you need, only take that one other throw back to the sea. After that quotas, quotas mean, for example, they said that they, the government can give the license to the companies that this company can catch up to only 2000 kilogram fish per day or in one month, not more than that. If they will do more than that, they will license will cancel. So like this, they can specific quotas. Quotas mean you will fix an amount for someone. So that is his quota. For example, you say company A, it can catch 2000 kg. So what is the quota for company A, 2000 kg. And by this way, you can educate the people, you can educate the fishermen then they should do in this way and government should make the, you can say, legislation on that one. Close seasons, you know that there are some seasons, the some months in which the fish lay egg or they reproduce. They go in the process of the, you can say, regeneration. So if the government will stop the fishing only on those time, so it will also give a boost to increase the population of the fish. Protected areas, as I told you, the area sometimes, for example, this coastal area, mostly the fish, they come and lay egg in these areas. And if you start fishing here, the fish will not come. And if any will come, they will be caught. So if the government will say that in this season, nobody will catch a fish from this area. So then it will remain a protected reserve for the some type of the fish they can come here they can lay egg the their babies can produce and then they can become fish this is one thing after that international agreement not only nationally internationally the countries they should make a organization they make some decision so that they can make some kind of agreement which can reduce the fish overfishing and they have given this one. So please remember this act. In the exam, if they come, give an example, you can, this one, Magnuson Stevens Fish Free Conservation and Management Act, this one. And it is where in the USA, you can give the example, at least one. After that economic exclusive zone, you can say that, as we said, you can specify only 200 nautical miles is the limit for every country. Beyond that, they cannot go. So this is also, give a sustainable population for the fish. International agreements, we said that, and one of them, you can say UN clause, okay, UN Convention of Laws of Sea. UN Convention Laws of Sea. So this one also, you should know their names. Sometimes they ask an exam. Maybe one more question, but it's better you know. After that, Mediterranean, also here the example after that monitoring is very important you made the rules you made the law different countries are working together but if you will not monitor if you will not keep a check on the rules you will not monitor that the rule you made the countries are following or not if you will not ma make this monitoring there is no use of any law any agreement so they're saying that this is important to make rules, but it is more important to monitor them, to supervise them, to find them. Anybody is misusing this law or not. Any country, any company. And if they find that any organization is misusing that law, they should cancel their license. They put the fine. And 
if any country and organization following the laws they should give them give them some reward they give them some incentive prize this one so effect, effectiveness of strategies can only happen when there is a punishment and reward system will be so this is the how you can see the you, how you can stop the overfishing reduce the you can say um, the wastage of the fish and all these things by different things so these are the terms so is it clear to everyone please let me know if anything is left